Okay, we're given a cost function and we're going to answer some questions about average cost, marginal cost, and minimizing average cost. So the first thing on here, on part A, what we're given is we want to know the cost at a production level of 1100. So simply the cost in this case. So we're going to use the cost function and plug in 1100. So replace each of the X's over on the right hand side with 1100. Work that out, and it's going to be one million five hundred and eighty thousand, and that'll be in dollars because it's a cost. All right. Next up, the average cost, average cost, which I'm going to use AC to represent. We can say that's going to be whatever our cost function is, divided by however many um, items we've produced. All right. So C of X divided by X. So in our case, we can say that's forty thousand plus three hundred X plus x squared, all divided by x. That can represent our average cost. However, on this, because we already did a little bit of work in part A, we can use that work and answer this question. We know that um, it's the same production level of 1,100 for our x value. That's going to be a cost of 1,580,000 from part A divided by however many um, items. So 1,100 items will go in for X. This works out to be $1,436.36. I rounded to the nearest cent, although that three six at the end is repeating. All right, next up, our marginal cost. Marginal cost, which I can say is, uh, we can use MC sometimes to represent our marginal cost means the exact same thing as the derivative of our cost for all of our intents and purposes. All right, so we can use our cost function, take its derivative. Technically, the marginal cost means the cost to produce one more item, each addition, uh, the, the next item. But for our case, what we wanna do is think of this as being the derivative of our cost function. So kind of one term at a time here, the derivative of 40,000, it's a constant, so that derivative is gonna be zero. I'm not gonna write it down. Next term, we have 300x, which is a linear term. So it's just going to be 300. And then finally, our x squared, we can use the power rule. Go ahead and bring down the two, reduce the exponent by one. So 300 plus 2x is going to be a representation of our marginal cost or the derivative of the cost function. Next, let's go ahead and evaluate this at 1100. So we can say our marginal cost evaluated at 1100, as we were asked to do, is gonna be 300 plus two times uh, 1100. Which works out to be 2,500. Next, we wanna find the production level that's gonna minimize our average cost. So to find this, what we wanna do is we're gonna use the average cost function that we created in part B so I'm going to bring this along. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and represent that average cost function as three separate individual fractions instead of one big fraction. So I'm first going to go ahead and say that's 40,000 divided by X. I'm taking the monomial from the denominator and putting one copy with each term from our numerator plus 300X over X plus X squared over X. Now why I'm doing this is I am going to have to take the derivative of our average cost uh, to find critical numbers and then figure out if, where we get a minimum at. Um, instead of using the quotient rule, I think it's going to be a little bit easier if we go ahead and break this down, rewrite it so that we can use the power rule instead. So the 40,000 divided by X, I can move this X up into the numerator and put it with the 40,000 by using a negative exponent. Now the X's in the 300 X over X, we have one in the numerator, one in the denominator. When you put one of the same thing over itself, you get a one. So we can simply make that a 300 in the middle. And then for our last term, we have X squared over X is going to be X. One more X in the numerator than we had in the denominator. All right. To get our critical numbers, we want to take the derivative of this function. So power rule, bring the negative 
down in front, multiply it by the 40,000. So we get negative 40,000. Then we'll reduce that exponent by one. So negative one minus one more makes negative two. The 300 in the middle is a constant. So its derivative is going to be zero. And the derivative of x is just going to be one. Next, what we'd like to do is set this equal to zero and solve down. All right, we're going to get critical numbers either whenever the derivative is undefined or when it's equal to zero. Now, this one would be undefined at zero because um, that x squared can go back to the denominator if we'd like, but that's not going to help us much if we're trying to figure out this real life production level problem. So I'm going to set it equal to zero. Let's go ahead and rewrite that with a positive exponent. So we can say the x squared goes back to the denominator, make it a positive exponent plus one. And then because this is equal to zero, I'm going to go ahead and subtract the one, move that to the other side. So we get negative one on the right hand side. I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared because we can't solve for x while it's in the denominator. Multiplying by x squared will cancel out the x squared from the denominator. Now we're going to have negative 40,000 equals negative x squared. Let's isolate the x squared by getting rid of the negative in front by dividing by negative one. So we'll get x squared equals 40,000. And then to get x all by itself and get rid of the exponent, we can apply a square root to both sides. Now I'm not worrying about the plus and minus because real life example wouldn't make sense to produce a negative number of items. Um, the square root of 40,000 is gonna give us 200 and we can call that a critical number. Critical number or critical value at 200. Now to test whether this is actually a minimum value, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do the second derivative test. We could use the first derivative test, but I'm electing to use the second derivative test. What that's gonna entail is we're gonna use the first derivative take its derivative to get our second derivative. And I'm utilizing this version where we have the negative exponent going on right here. So the second derivative is gonna be power rule with the negative two comes down, multiply it by negative 40,000. So we get positive 80,000. Reduce the exponent by one. So we get a negative three. And then the derivative of the one, a constant is gonna be zero. Now again, Sometimes it just makes a little bit more sense if we write these with positive exponents so we can see exactly what's going on, but that's our second derivative. We can evaluate our critical number into that second derivative. So 200 gets plugged in and we're gonna get 80,000 divided by 200 cubed. Now, what we really care about is if this turns out positive or negative. Okay, because the numerator is positive and we're dividing by a positive number that's been cubed, the overall result is gonna be positive. All right, what that tells us is when the second derivative is positive, that tells us about concavity. And this one is gonna be concave up because it was an overall positive result coming out. Concave up is gonna have this sort of shape and that implies that we have a minimum value at uh, an X value of 200. All right, the very last thing we wanna know is what's the minimal average cost? So to find this, we're gonna use the critical number we found, 200. We're gonna go back up to the average cost formula and we're gonna plug that in. So to finish this up, I'm, I'm using the original version of our average cost formula where we had 40,000 plus 300 times, we're gonna plug 200 in, plus 200 squared, and that all gets divided by our X, which was 200 in this case, for an overall result of 700. So our minimal average cost would be 700. That's the very, very best we can do uh, based on the cost function that we were originally given. All right, I know it's a long problem, I hope this helps out as you're working through these and trying to understand average cost and marginal cost. 
just a little bit better.